join and worship with us today as well as those that may be worshiping with us uh, from your uh, screen this morning we welcome you all and are glad that you are here we have several that will be celebrating a special day this week um, those birthdays are patrick stearns brady daniels sean longfoot and zoe kinslow and then some anniversaries John and Lynn Rush, Darren and Stephanie Toddy, and Reddick and Debbie Scott. So blessings on all of you for your special day. Announcements. Today is family worship, so any of the children that are here, there's a children's worship bulletin available for you on the vestibule table. Youth night tonight is movie and pizza. So show up at 530 to get some pizza. And at about 5.45, we'll start watching God is Not Dead, and that will wrap up around 7.45 this evening. We also want to be praying for our youth and sponsors that will attend TNT this coming weekend at Trevecca. And we wish those uh, luck to those that are competing in that regional camp, uh, competition representing Mid-South District. There's a lot of things happening in April. There's a volunteer day at Camp Garner Creek on Saturday, April 2nd. Our first Sunday potluck is April 3rd. Church board meeting on April 10th. And then April 17th is Easter. We will have potluck lunch that day, so you're invited to join us for that. There will be an egg hunt for the children. And if you would like to bring some eggs for that, we have some free plastic eggs available in the back. You're welcome to pick those up on your way out. There's also things happening in March, so uh, sorry, in May. So be sure and check your bulletin, check our website, follow us on social media, call me, you know, do what you need to do to stay in the information loop so that you can participate in all that is happening in our church life. Well, this morning, as we turn our hearts toward worship, I invite you to stand and let's hear the word of the Lord for us this morning from Psalm 32. How joyful is the one whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. How joyful is the man the Lord does not charge with sin and in whose spirit is no deceit. When I kept silent, my bones became brittle from my groaning all day long. For day and night your hand was heavy on me, my strength was drained as in the summer's heat. Then I acknowledged my sin to you and did not conceal my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you took away the guilt of my sin. Therefore, let everyone who is faithful pray to you at a time that you may be found. When great floodwaters come, they will not reach him. You are my hiding place. You protect me from trouble. You surround me with joyful shouts of deliverance. This is the word of the Lord. pray together this morning. Gracious Heavenly Father, we are indeed thankful that we can gather in your house, call upon your name, worship you together. We ask Holy Spirit, come, enable us to worship you well. We pray that our worship will be pleasing 
and be useful to build us up into the image and likeness of Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. Well, Mom's gone, so you're stuck with me. Everybody uh, turn to page 705. There's a call comes ringing over oh, the restless wings Send the light, send the light There are souls to rescue, there are souls to save Send the light, send the light, send the light The blessed gospel light, let it shine from shore to shore Send the light, the blessed gospel light, let it shine forevermore. We have heard the Macedonian call today, send the light, send the light. Here are sold an offering at the cross, we lay, send the light, send the light. Send the light, the blessed gospel light, let it shine from shore to shore. Send the light, the blessed gospel light, let it shine forevermore. Let us pray that grace may everywhere abound. Send the light, send the light. Golden heaven everywhere be found. Send the light, send the light, send the light. The blessed gospel light, let it shine from shore to shore. Send the light, the blessed gospel light, let it shine forevermore. not grow weary in the work of love in the light in the light let us gather jewels for a crown above in the light in the light in the light the blessed gospel light let it shine from shore to shore in the light the blessed gospel light let it shine forevermore all right y'all y'all can sit Six fifty one, y'all, six fifty one. On Jordan stormy banks I stand and cast of a wishful eye to Canaan's fair and happy land. land I am bound for the promised land oh, who will come and go with me I am bound for the promised land all o'er those wide extended plains shines one eternal day there God the sun forever and scatters night away. I am bound for the promised land. I am bound for the promised land. Oh, who will come and go with me? I am bound for the promised land. No chilling winds nor poisonous breath can the helpful shore. Oh, sickness, and oh, pain and death are felt and feared no more. I am bound for the promised
promised land I am bound for the promised land Oh, who will come and go with me I am bound for the promised land When shall I reach that happy place And be forever blessed When shall I see my father's face And in his bosom rest I am bound for the promised land I am bound for the promised land Oh, who will come and go with me I am bound for the promised land If those who have been asked to wait on us for this morning tithes and offerings would come. We are very happy to have our helpers this morning. Let's pray together. Gracious Heavenly Father, we are indeed thankful that we can come to your house and share in your work. We pray. Bless the offerings that we receive this morning, the gift and the giver, and help us to use these resources wisely in the work of the kingdom of God and of his Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Fifteen is our last one today. Three fifteen. of my bliss, yes, the secret all is this, that the Comforter abides with me. He abides, He abides, hallelujah, He abides with me. I'm rejoicing night and day as I walk the narrow way, for the Comforter abides with me. Once my heart was full of sin, once I had no peace within, till I heard how Jesus died upon the tree. And I fell down at his feet, and there came a peace so sweet, now the Comforter abides with me. He abides, he abides, hallelujah, he abides with me. Rejoicing night and day as I walk the narrow way For the Comforter abides with me He is with me everywhere and He knows my every care I'm as happy as a bird and just as free For the Spirit has control, Jesus satisfies my soul Since the Comforter abides with me he abides, He abides, hallelujah, He abides with me. I'm rejoicing night and day as I walk the narrow way, for the Comforter abides with me. As thirsting for the things of the world, they've taken wings. I'm as up and instantly. 
Night was turned to day, all my burdens rolled away. Now the Comforter abides with me. He abides, he abides, hallelujah, he abides with me. I'm rejoicing night and day as I walk the narrow way, for the Comforter abides with me. decided last Sunday night we were using parts of God's Not Dead for our lesson and they we decided we'd just watch it and enjoy some pizza so come along invite a friend it's going to be good I don't want to eat all that pizza by myself <laughs> I don't need to so yeah well I'll try <laughs> he knows me too well I will definitely try well it is our family worship so all y'all young ones are standing here with us which means we get to turn around instead of watching you run away and go good morning so find you some young person in here you normally don't you normally don't get to say hi to and say good morning <laughs> Good morning. As we turn our hearts toward prayer, the situation in the Ukraine continues to bear heavily upon our hearts. Keep the people of Ukraine in our prayers, our leaders, those who are working for peace. So remember our soldiers, our sailors, our airmen, our marines, those serving in our Coast Guard. Apparently, I'm not on yet. Maybe I should just start over and say the Ukraine is very much on our hearts and minds. Pray for the people of Ukraine. Pray for those suffering from the harm we see being done there pray for those fighting on both sides pray for our national leaders especially those working toward peace pray for our soldiers our sailors our airmen those serving in the marines and coast guard We pray for our first responders, law enforcement agents, firefighters, EMTs, our healthcare workers, our teachers, who are getting a bit of a break today, and I'm glad to see you all didn't join them on travels outside. You know, it's nice that not everybody missed church this morning. It's good to see you. We continue to remember Stephanie Redding as she's recovering from surgery. Remember Dorothy, a friend of mine's mom, fighting cancer. Pray for Reddick and his health. Continue to pray for Brenda Rohan and her recovery. Remember Scott Williams and Helen McClanahan. We uh, have good news about Ryan. His recovery continues, and we praise God for that. Remember Bill, Michelle's dad. Cindy, are there others that you would add to our list? John? Continue praying for uh, Billy Green in our worship team. Billy Green? Michael? I know we don't hear about it because there's not a war going on there, but in the country of Cuba, there's a lot of unrest, violent acts, and though they are not doing it, it's being blamed on Christians. Okay. I remember the unrest mentioned in Cuba, especially our brothers and sisters in Christ there. Remember Veronica today?
unspoken prayer request you might want to indicate this morning. Let's pray together. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we are indeed thankful that we can gather in your house today. Our hearts are burdened for what we see happening in Ukraine. We pray for the people displaced. We pray for the people who are mourning their losses. And we pray for peace. We ask that you would be with our nation's leaders and the leaders of our world. We pray that you would guide them in a way that would help them to broker a lasting peace. We pray for our soldiers, our sailors, our airmen, Marines, Coast Guard. We just ask that you would be with those serving our country in the armed forces and protect them. We pray for our first responders, our firemen and EMTs, our law enforcement agents. We pray keep them safe as they protect us. We pray for our health care workers and teachers. We pray that those teachers on break in Murray County would be granted a good respite in this week and that you would renew them. We pray for Stephanie and her recovery. We ask that you would touch her body and help it to heal. We pray for Dorothy and her fight against cancer. We pray that you'd be with Reddick. We pray that you'd give him good days and continue to be with him and touch his body. Pray for Brenda and her recovery. We ask that you would be with Scott and Helen. Continue to be with Ryan and help his recovery. Pray that you'd be with Bill and give him good days. We pray for Cindy and for Billy and Veronica and for Farmer Pete. We pray for the people of Cuba. Today, Lord, we ask that you would be with us, this congregation, those needs represented by unspoken prayer requests indicated in your house today. And then I pray that you would be with us as we study from your word, speak to us truth that would help us to be like Jesus, that would help us to become more like Jesus, that would help us to love our world and our neighbors the way you do. To that end, we pray, Holy Spirit, open our hearts and minds that we might hear what you would say to your church today. In Jesus' name, amen. If you have your Bibles, find the book of 1 Peter. The book of 1 Peter, it's almost at the end of the New Testament, so almost at the back of the Bible. continue to work on the idea of those core common beliefs that Christians share and that we share historically with Orthodox Christians all over the world and would have shared for centuries, even millennia now. From 1 Peter chapter 2, beginning at verse 22, Going through verse 25, we'll be reading this morning. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 22, hear the word of the Lord. He committed no sin, and no deceit was found in his mouth. When he was abused, he did not return abuse. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but he entrusted himself to the one who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that free from sins we might live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed, for you were going astray like sheep. But now you have returned to the shepherd and the guardian of your souls. May the Lord bless the reading of his word this morning. If you're following along thematically and you kind of want to know where we are this morning, we would find ourselves exploring those couple of stanzas or that stanza from the Apostles' Creed where we would find the words, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. It's not so much that um, the creeds, 
And just never, never take the, uh, never understand that the creeds can substitute for scripture. They don't. But they express truth. They summarize beliefs. And they help us in that way. Maybe in a, a mnemonic way. A way that helps us to remember these core truths. And so much is summed up in these little phrases. Succinctly put, suffered under Pontius Pilate was crucified, dead, and buried, and so much is summed up. Somewhere around a third of every gospel (laughs) is found in the last week of Jesus' life, in the events that lead up to his suffering and death. If we were to look across the gospels and look for commonality, We would find the most of that in in that week, in those closing chapters of each one of the Gospels. And so, very succinctly, in the creed we call the Apostles' Creed, they've summarized all of that in these two lines. The reality of Jesus as a historic figure is not highly questioned these days. So much evidence points to his existence the christian religion the christian faith asserts that jesus christ was a unique being that he was fully divine we would find those lines in the creed which say he was born of the virgin mary which uh, makes you scratch your head and wonder how does that work well the divine part of that's generally pretty easy for us to get our heads around, or at least to acknowledge. Maybe we don't understand it, but I fear sometimes what we do is we concentrate so much on the divinity of Jesus, on how Jesus is God in flesh, God come to reveal the fullness of God to us humans, uh, that we forget that Christ was also fully human, The Christian religion has asserted since its earliest days that in Jesus we find two whole and perfect natures. That formulation is no mistake. In one person we find two whole and perfect natures. So in Jesus Christ we find the fullness of God, but we also find the perfection of humanity, whole humanity. This unusual birth with its divine origins does not negate the humanness of Jesus. So there is the born of a woman, but then there are these lines that he suffered and died and was buried. They concentrate our minds, they focus on the fact that The full humanity of Jesus is not only expressed in his human form, but in his human death. A death death that somehow atones for our sins. In the shedding of Jesus' blood, On the cross, something changes. And we, you and I and every other sinner on the planet, can be forgiven. If we repent and believe in Jesus. Today, the cross is an ugly and sometimes difficult symbol for us to understand. Human beings are so separated from death in our day and time. I run across people who have I love technology. It's 
come in and we're going to get it installed. And until then, which will happen this week, I'm sure. I'm turning that off and I'm going back old school and I'm just going to raise my voice, okay? Is that a little better? Can you hear me now? Should I pull out my phone and ask, can you hear me now? It's either that or somebody doesn't want me to preach this sermon. So We're so separated from death in our day and time. It's, it's not unusual at all for me to talk to an adult, a person of 40 or 50 or 60 years, who's never experienced a loved one dying in their presence. They've never actually been present with a person when they die. It sounds very strange, but I feel so privileged, so fortunate as to have been able to share in those final moments with so many of my parishioners over time. Those are precious moments. Those are interesting and teaching moments when it seems like life gets concentrated into just a moment, a, a span of two or three seconds, and I don't know any way to describe it other than it's like the space between this world and the next grows thin as a person breathes their last breath and whatever it is that happens at death. We believe the spirit going to be with God. That's, that's a powerful moment. But so many people don't experience that in our day and time. They're separated from death. And so a metaphor of a dying Savior, a symbol of a cross, a, a means of capital punishment, execution by the state, doesn't necessarily have the same grip on our imagination that it has for so many centuries, that it had in those early days. This death was ugly. This death was brutal. The death that Jesus died in a single day was, was horrible and yet such a short form of crucifixion. Undoubtedly, his body had been ravaged by the scourging and the beating. Uh, maybe you have endured, I dare say watch, but... Maybe you have endured watching that movie, The Passion of the Christ. And you have undoubtedly winced and flinched at how brutal the scourging and beating and whipping of Jesus with blood flying and flesh flying And people said, it was too gruesome. It, it, and I'm thinking, maybe it was that mild. The Romans knew how to kill people. And they used their flogging and scourging and crucifixion as a means of psychological control. This method of execution was used like a brutal hammer to demonstrate Roman power. And what happens when you stand against the emperor? Most people would suffer for days. A very strong person might go almost two weeks on the cross, finally dying as much from dehydration and malnutrition as from asphyxiation. But Jesus had been scourged and beaten to the point where he was already bleeding to death before they crucified him. And in that sense, that crucifixion was mercifully short. This brutal form of execution, this shedding of Jesus, 
blood was for you and for me an atoning sacrifice making possible the forgiveness of our sins the perfect blood sacrifice to atone for sin this ugly scandalous horrific death that Jesus died made possible the forgiveness for all humanity such that those who will repent and believe will be forgiven we're told in the Old Testament that without blood there is no remission of sins and so today with those Christians who have gone before really with Jesus and with the prophets we proclaim the death of Jesus Christ a sacrifice given for the remission of sins foreshadowed or even foretold hundreds of years before the events how many of you are familiar with Isaiah 53? How many of you would remember that the book of Isaiah dates to the time that we generally associate with the Babylonian captivity, the exile of the Jews? Hundreds of years before Jesus. I see so many of you just waking up with the recognition of Isaiah 53. Can I be that facetious from the pulpit? I mean, you know, it's like Isaiah 53. Maybe I, I know Isaiah is a book in the Old Testament. That's what I sort of see. There's a little recognition. Here, Isaiah 53, it's not very long as far as a chapter goes. Who has believed what we have heard? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he grew up before him like a young plant and like a root out of dry ground he had no form or majesty that we should look at him nothing in his appearance that we should desire him he was despised and rejected by others a man of suffering and acquainted with infirmity and as one from whom others hide their faces he was despised and we held him of no account surely he has borne our infirmities and carried our diseases, yet we accounted him stricken, struck down by God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the punishment that made us whole, and by his bruises we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray, and we have all turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed, he was afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. Like a lamb that is led to slaughter and like a sheep that before its shears is silent, so he did not open his mouth. By a perversion of justice he was taken away. Who could have imagined his future? For he was cut off from the land of the living stricken for the transgressions of my people. They made his grave with the wicked and his tomb with the rich, although he had done no violence and there was no deceit in his mouth. Yet it was the will of the Lord to crush him with pain. When you make his life an offering for sin, he shall see his offspring and shall prolong his days. Through him the will of the Lord shall prosper. Out of his anguish he shall see light. He shall find satisfaction through his knowledge. The righteous one, my servant, shall make many righteous, and he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore, I will allot him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he poured out himself to death and was numbered with the transgressors. Yet he bore the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. Hear those words 
by Isaiah spoken hundreds of years before Christ died on the cross. <coughs> Understand what a picture he paints, a picture that we would see in reality when Jesus was dying on the cross. And so, again, with a historic understanding of Christianity with the Gospels themselves, with the teachings of the early church, we proclaim within your hearing today that Christ has died that your sins might be forgiven. Repent and believe upon Jesus Christ. Turn from your wicked way and turn toward God. Believe upon Jesus and be forgiven. Begin following Christ and his teachings so that you might know the forgiving power of the blood that was shed on the cross of Calvary. These words of a poet and a preacher, not me. Ring in my heart, resonate in my soul when I think about the blood of Jesus shed for me. And his blood hath this strange might that being scarlet, it stains black souls to white. This morning we find ourselves at that point in our cycle where we celebrate the Lord's Supper, where we remember that as Jesus celebrated the Passover meal with his disciples, that he took bread and he took wine and after blessing them, he passed them and he changed the meaning. He reworked the symbology so that all of those who would come after the crucifixion would be reminded in the communion supper that we celebrate in symbol today that as the bread was torn, the body of Christ was broken. That as the juice or the wine is in the cup, the body, the blood of Christ was poured out for our forgiveness. This morning, as we celebrate this communion supper instituted by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we proclaim those sufferings still. His sacrificial death and his resurrection and the hope of his coming again as we remember he has made it possible for our sins to be forgiven. The supper is a means of grace in which Christ is present by the Spirit. It is to be received in reverent appreciation and gratefulness for the work of Christ. I remind you that in the Church of the Nazarene, we practice open communion. You do not have to be a member of the Church of the Nazarene, this local church, in order to partake with us today. What we ask is that if you are a born-again believer in Jesus Christ, if you know your sins have been forgiven by your repentance and belief upon Jesus, then gather with us at this table. You are welcome, brother or sister, and partake with us in the life and death and the atoning sacrifice Jesus offered with his body on the cross. In unity with the church universal, we confess our faith. If you don't know it, we'll just say it together. You can say it after me. Christ has died. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Christ will come again. Let us pray. Holy God, we gather at this your table in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who by your Spirit 
was anointed to preach the good news to the poor. Proclaim release to the captive, set at liberty those who are oppressed. Christ healed the sick, fed the hungry, ate with sinners, and established a new covenant for forgiveness of sins. We live in the hope of his coming again. On the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread, he gave thanks, he broke the bread, and he gave it to his disciples and said, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, when the supper was over, he took the cup, he gave thanks and gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And so we gather as the body of Christ to give thanks and praise and to offer ourselves, we ask God to pour out his Holy Spirit upon us and these gifts to make them by the power of God's Spirit to be for us the body and blood of Christ so that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. We ask God to make us one by his Spirit one with each other and one in the ministry of Christ to all the world till Christ comes again in final victory. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And now as the Lord has taught us to pray, let us be bold and pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. If those other ministers present would come and prepare to wait on us, as you receive the elements, prepare to take them, but hold them so that we may all partake together.
of the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, broken for you. May it preserve you blameless until everlasting life. Eat this in remembrance that Christ died for you. Be thankful. The blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was shed for you, may it preserve you blameless until his coming again. Drink this in remembrance that Christ died for you, and be thankful. Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, who did not spare your only Son, but he sent him to be for us an atoning sacrifice that our sins might be forgiven, that we might know life eternal in Jesus Christ. Grant today that we who have partaken of the body and blood of Jesus may know the joy of our salvation. Remember what Christ has done for us, and be thankful. Bless now, I pray, those who have come into your house. Meet a blessing out for each one fit for their needs in the coming days. We pray that the Holy Spirit would guide us, directing our paths so that we might live lives pleasing to you, so that we might be for the world, the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. Now I pray, send us into the world to do the work of Christ here and now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Go.